would appear everything got covered. Everything's got taken care of. No one's the wiser. But about a year later, a man named Nathan, a prophet, comes to David. And he shares with David a story. And it's the story about a poor man who has only one pet lamb. It's a household pet. His, his kids love it. He loves it. The scripture says the man carries this baby pet lamb everywhere he goes. But alongside of him is a rich landowner who has many cattle and many sheep. And this guy has a guest who comes to visit. Well, in preparing a meal for that man, what does the rich man choose to do? He takes the poor man's only lamb, sacrifices it, and feeds it to his guest. With all that he had, he had to take from someone who only had little. David, when he hears this story, he's furious. He says, that man deserves to what? Die. And you've got to love Nathan's response, those of you that know it. David, you are that man. Wow, talk about conviction. It really sometimes takes somebody else putting our sin in a different perspective to help us come out of the darkness into God's light. Does it not? See, he's, he's hidden behind you know, this screen that he's put out there that makes himself look like a good guy, taking in this poor woman who in fact is with child. And wow, what a great hero we have. Our King David, he helps this poor widow. Literally, most of the people know that he's the one who brought her to that point, made her a widow, made her pregnant. Psalm 51 verse 1 records part of David's confession. And he says, Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You know what strikes me the most about David's confession? Because unquestionably he's busted, right? He gets it. But what strikes me the most is that he says against you and you alone, speaking of God, have I sinned. Really? Well, what about, what about that woman you seduced and probably against her will had sex with her? You didn't sin against her at all? What about that man, her husband, who you arranged for him to be killed? You didn't sin against that guy at all? I don't believe that's what David's trying to say here. He's not diminishing his sin against others, but he is maximizing his sin against a holy God. And that's a place that I think you and I lack a lot of times. We recognize our sin against others, feel badly about it often, confess, ask for forgiveness, but don't often recognize that against God we've sinned the most. One of the things that I would have you take home today is that our recognition of sin has to precede our confession. I want you to turn with me if you haven't already done so.